Drew, where's Drew? There he is. Um, Alyssa. Leah. I mean, I've been coaching for a long, long time. And when I came here, um, we all kind of coached each other. And I just kept at it and going and going and going. Forever. <laughs> oh, he's a goofy guy. He's, he's really funny. He acts strict, but he's just like a fluff ball inside. So, and then I started coaching more seriously and training more seriously. And um, that's how that got started. I never thought, oh, I gotta go to work. I, I don't think I missed 10 days in 50 years. But I'm lucky that way. I, I want a cartwheel. That's a diving cartwheel. He's very verbal about like what he wants done and if you're too scared to do it or if you're just not quite there, he'll push you like verbally. Uh, he can't really physically push you, he's too old for that. It's hard to do him without stopping. But um, he's definitely like a very good coach. He knows how to work with a lot of students. He's been working as a coach and through gymnastics for a while, so he knows what he's doing. Why do I continue to do it? I never think about that something I do. It's just something that happened. That I, you know, that I used to go to the gym every day for three hours and coach and train or whatever, and then I just continue to do it. I wanted to make the Olympic team. I thought I was going to be good enough, and I wasn't. Oh my God! I think my biggest accomplishment is is not an accomplishment for me. My biggest accomplishment is all the young guys that I helped get better, not only as a gymnast but as a person. He definitely knows how people think that haven't done gymnastics before. He knows that everyone's scared about doing like back handsprings and things like that, and. He'll take you through it slowly. I taught at an elementary school, locally. Schools usually run somewhere 7.30, 8 o'clock to 3, and practice here was always 3 to 7, so that there was no conflict. All the competition is on the weekend. So I had really had two jobs for the longest time of teaching and then coming here and coaching. Uh, this is volunteer. Did you know that? But Walt's a really good teacher, and he'll just, he, he keeps pestering you and tells you, you know, you're not doing it right, but he'll still stay there and, and help out. I was uh, National uh, Coach of the Year in 1984. And, uh, I didn't know what was coming on. We, they have the big conference every year. They all get together, and I was sitting at the back, and the, I was ch chatting away, and they said, they, guys that I with were poking me and they said, that's you? And I said, what? What for? They said, they just voted you National Coach of the Year. I said, whoa, okay. So I had to go up to the dais and <sighs> choke. <laughs> he's like a, a little kid, but he still, he still has his youth. He still like loves, <laughs> loves ice cream and all that. Um, and he's also still like that college guy. I swing on the bar and try to do stuff still. I don't know, it's just something I do. I did it for so long and it was part of, I guess part of my life. So I never thought, why do I continue to do it? I never think about that's something I do, it's just something that happened. It's probably the funnest experience I've had on campus since I've, I've been in Syracuse. Stop being a pussy, just do it. Yeah. He says that a good amount, especially to me. Um, yeah, the people that have been here longer, he'll curse that more because he'll know that he's joking, but kind of serious at the same time. I, I never thought about leaving a legacy. I guess the legacy is all those people I coached all those years, hopefully thinking fond of the time that they were here and I trained them. That's a legacy, isn't it? Okay. We done? Are you going to cut all the silly stuff out? <laughs>